Hey girlies, hey gays, hey theys, and welcome back to Live, Laugh, Love, Lesbian. I am so excited today because guys, we did it. We hit 1,000 downloads. My goal was to reach it by episode 10, but it's only episode 9. I'm literally buzzing. Um, We're actually past a thousand now we're up to like what i think we're up to like 1500 it's just insane um i honestly can't thank you all enough for the love for the support for listening um for sending in your dilemmas answering the questions of the week sending in your stories because um i say if no one listened i would still do it because i enjoy doing it but it makes it so much nicer to know that there's people listening and enjoying so thank you so so much i love and appreciate you all this week we've i'm gonna be honest with you guys we've not had that many dilemmas sent in not that many of you have answered the question of the week so it might be a short episode but i'm keeping it real with you all because i want to be open and honest and taylor's just started running the shower so i hope you can't hear it but yeah i want you know to be honest like because it's not been easy um you know it, I've worked hard to get I know 1000 like is a small number to some people but I've worked really hard to reach there um and you know we're just still a small podcast and I really really hope we grow to be like a a really big podcast um but at the minute we're just like a small little podcast so yeah I want to be you know open and honest with you guys there's not been that many things sent in this week but it's all good. Um, we have actually had our first person send in an update to one of the dilemmas that they sent in, which I find really cool that people are like obviously listening and then listening again and then like resending stuff in. It's just really cool to know that there's actually people out there that listen. Um, and I I would love to know who the people are who are sending in the dilemmas because it's completely anonymous. So I literally have no idea. And I wonder like, do I know you? Like, are you a complete stranger? Like, yeah, it's just... It, it blows my mind, but yeah, keeping it real, always, so please, you know, get involved with the podcast, send in, you can send in your dilemmas, you can send in, like, a story, I'd love to hear your guys' like, craziest and wildest, like, lesbian date, I mean, they don't even have to be lesbian dating stories, but obviously the podcast is called Live, Laugh, Love, Lesbian, so if it was, like, a lesbian or queer dating story, like, a wild, crazy one, or even if it's just a normal, cute one you know I don't care I'll read it out um yeah so questions stories dilemmas anything like that and please get involved with the questions of the week I post them on my tiktok normally like a day or two before I film and um, my tiktok is Juliet Francis T it will all be linked in the description of the podcast so if you want to get involved with the podcast um that is how you can do it because I would love for you guys to feel like a part of this community I say it's like I really want it to be a safe space for people just to come and listen and feel accepted and feel seen and feel heard so please get involved if you want to be a silent listener that's totally cool too but the podcasts are going to get shorter and shorter if less and less people send stuff in where I'm going to have to start sending stuff in myself um so yeah please send stuff in get involved but let's get straight on into this week's episode. Okay, so this week's question of the week was in a lesbian, a queer relationship, who should pay for the bill? on a first day or just on a date night in general the answers have been quite varied um i'll maybe give my what's the saying two pence worth um might ask taylor her opinion too um yeah some of the answers say whoever invited the other or just or like both just argue over who pays to be cute and then split it that's cute Someone says, split, just split it. Every other way is weird. Like, why would the mask presenting woman pay? Question mark. Someone else says, split it. Saves the awkwardness of who pays. 
Someone else says the person who pays should either be the mask if the date was planned by both, but otherwise it should be the one that asked the other on a date. Somebody else says I've been on one date with a gal and she wouldn't let me buy her food, so we just bought our own. But I'd say if it was a long term thing, then we'd probably take it in turns. Somebody else said I'm a mask and I always pay for my other half slash date. I think it's like an interesting one because obviously in like a, what was that word last week? A heteronormal, I think that was the word couple, technically the man always pays. And I know that is not true, but that is like the stereotypical thing that like the man pays. But obviously let's go with like a lesbian couple to a woman. There's not that normal stereotype to go off so I suggested in the video basically I just gave the options I was like you know should the more masculine presenting pay should you split it should the person who's in a higher earning job pay should the person who organized the date pay and not saying that there is a right answer to this question I just needed a question of the week and thought of this one and thought it would be good to get your guys' opinions on um I don't really know where I stand on this. Um, for the majority of mine and Taylor's relationship, like near the beginning, I paid for pretty much everything, um, even though I'm very much like the more feminine presenting one. And that was solely to do with the fact that Taylor was a poor uni student and I was earning more money than her. Well, Taylor was earning no money, so I was paying for most of the dates. And now we kind of split it now that we're both earning um sometimes some of us are more poor than the other so it just depends who's more poor at the time normally that person pays but yeah we split we split most things or we like sort of take it in turns we don't go oh I paid last time so it's your turn to pay today we don't really keep tabs on it like that I feel like if you do that that's when you start to like cause issues do you know what I mean say like Taylor paid for the most like the previous day and then it got to the next date so it was my turn to pay but I was low on funds and I was like, oh, can you pay? Um, and then she said, oh, well, I paid for the last one. I feel like that's just causing an argument. We rarely split things. I think it's just a faff, isn't it? Like at a restaurant, like, oh, can I pay £16.50? And oh, can I pay £12.45? Like, it's just weird. And like groceries and stuff, we do still live at home with my parents. So they do buy most of the food. But like, say tonight, oh my God, we got robbed in Waitrose. I'm not even joking. We bought some Hagen Das ice cream. I bought that new fancy shampoo and conditioner. What brand is it again? I've got it in my bag. Um, the LV like pink fancy shampoo and conditioner. I bought that. We bought. I don't even remember what else we bought. Um, a birthday card for my cousin. We bought like a lot of like little groceries, and it cost us forty five pounds we were flabbergasted 45 pounds like when you look at what we bought it was it was not giving 45 pounds worth of things but I guess that's what it shows for you but anyway the point is like we would never be like oh so you owe me so I paid for it because most of the stuff was mine that's normally how we do it like whoever's buying the most stuff or like the most expensive things will buy it but I'm not going to sit there and be like oh, okay you owe me three pound fifty for that Hagen dazs ice cream and you owe me this much for this other thing that you bought. So, like, next time we go shopping, if Taylor's buying, like, the majority of things, she'll buy it. Or if I'm buying the majority of things, I'll buy it. I'll not be like, oh, well, I bought it last time, so you buy it this time. I just don't feel like... I mean, for some people, that might work. But I feel like for our relationship, I just feel like it just wouldn't work. I just... And I feel like it's just causing, like, for an unhealthy, like, toxicness within the relationship because... I just feel like as soon as somebody is like, oh, well, I paid £50 for the meal last week and this one was only 20 so you can pay next. I just feel like you're just causing, like, the space for there to be, like, drama and issues and stuff. So, yeah, we just, we are like, I'll pay, you'll pay. Like, there's not really a format. I don't think we've ever actually discussed it. I think we just sort of just play it by ear. But I can... I can see why people would think like, oh, the mask presenting person should pay because 
like we said, stereotypically, it is the man who pays, not saying the mask is the man, but they're the more masculine presenting one. But I think it's nice for, like, you both to treat each other in the relationship. Um, yeah, it was interesting to hear your guys' thoughts and feelings on that. Now, like I said, we have had an update sent in. So let me just get it up. So this update was from the person let me just refresh because it's not refreshed this was from the person who oh why can't i find it ah found it this was from the person whose friend told them that they had feelings for them let's see if i can find what they sent in originally and then i'll tell you their response that they sent in today so originally they sent in one of my close friends has told me that they liked me, but the feeling isn't reciprocated. Recip reciprocated. I feel like I had this issue last time I said this word. Reciprocated. I don't know how to tell them this without making it awkward or ruining the friendship. And I think I basically sort of replied and said, you know, I would probably try and make a joke out of it. Or, you know, just have like a sit down chat and be like, N no. Um, but anyway, we have had an update. So it says update on my best friend telling me she liked me so i finally told her we needed to have a conversation this was about two weeks roughly about two weeks after she originally admitted she liked me and i told her that i don't really like her in that way but i still want to be friends and she got very angry with me and accused me of leading her on because i didn't tell her this sooner i don't believe i did lead her on but she is still annoyed at me it's been two days since this and I haven't spoke to her since. I really don't know what to do. So any advice would be very helpful. Oh, I feel like, yeah, I don't feel like you could have led her on. Maybe she's taken the fact that you didn't say anything back as leading her on. But I don't see how you can gather that, scenario, that um, what's the word, that outcome from that scenario. I feel like the silence and the no response would have been the answer enough to say, I don't feel the same way. I feel like this, you, your friendship should be salvageable. I think that's a word. I feel like you can still like get through this. Obviously, if there's not going to be that awkwardness there of you knowing that this friend has or has had in the past, if she gets over it, has feelings for you. But it is, I feel like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to suggest because I feel like you just going up and saying like, look, I I really don't feel like I did lead you on because obviously they've got in their mind what happened. Oh, I do have deodorant in this bag. Taylor's just looked at me with an empty deodorant can with a sad face. Um, do you have any advice for this situation, Taylor? Taylor says good luck. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like maybe you guys are just going to need a little bit of space. Obviously, this friend is, I mean, they've made like a really big decision to tell you this. They could have, you know, I think I brought the deodorant with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Like they could have lived with this secret forever. But, you know, they had the guts to tell you, which I think is a really, really gutsy thing to do. I think if I was in love with my best friend, I genuinely don't know if I would have the guts to tell them because... It's so scary to actually do that and to tell someone your feelings, especially when there is a high chance there that the feeling might not be reciprocated. Um, so, yeah, I feel like maybe this friend's just going to need some space, need some time to heal and almost like grieve the loss of what could have been. Because they, you know, if you're like, I'm a very like, naturally like flirtatious flirtatious person like I'm very like I love hugs like I love like I'll tell my friends that I love them like I'm a very like loving person so you know maybe if you're like that too this friend might have got a vibe from you that maybe you weren't meaning to give off give off you were just being yourself like you know giving them a hug goodbye like telling them that you love them which a lot of friends do but maybe they took it almost too literally so they're going to need some time just to like, you know, sort of, yeah, like grieve that loss of, of what could have been because, you know, they might have been thinking you were going to say that you love them back because you tell them it all the time anyway and you give them loads of hugs and you sort of 
show that like you know vulnerable side with them so I think definitely you want to just give them a little bit of space um and then maybe just reach out you know be like hey do you want to like catch up maybe like suggest somewhere that you guys like to go or if you're in like a bigger friendship group together maybe try and organize something to do with the group then it's not awkward because it's just you two there but you know you can hopefully just go back to the way it was maybe after a little bit of time and like going out as a group you might just not have to talk about it it might just naturally like fizzle out and you can just go back to being friends and maybe you won't go back to being like best friends and hanging out all the time but you could still you know be friends and see each other in like a group sort of situation I really hope that helps and here for you feel free to write in a third time with any future updates and thank you for sending in an update I really appreciate you and hope everything works out okay next thing that's been sent in is a question and it says controversial question so you don't need to answer but after the Angela Carini situation at the Olympics what is your opinion on transgender women competing in female sports categories now obviously this has been like very big in the news it's been all over I've seen people sharing like from all different sides of like what would the word be like the spectrum I've seen people that I'm friends with on Facebook being like this is ridiculous they shouldn't be letting trans women compete and then people who are like completely fighting for them to be allowed to compete but obviously it has been confirmed by the Olympics committee that oh I forgot her name now is it Amani? I think it's Amani. is it Amani? Taylor doesn't know I think it's Amani. I'm so sorry if I'm getting it wrong. It's the Algerian boxer. She was born a female. She identifies as a female and she's lived her life as a female. So she is not a transgender woman. Um, I think if she was, I... Well, Taylor, you wrote your uni dissertation about transgender women in sports, didn't you? Well, no. Oh, I thought you did. But I did have to do an assignment about it. Okay, that. can I pass you the mic? No. No, come on. We need some input from a... Taylor is a qualified sports coach should well you did a degree in it at uni she teaches gymnastics can you just give us some insight please or i'm gonna have to edit this without the podcast and i don't have the time or energy to do that so can you just relay what i'm saying to you okay it depends it depends completely <laughs> on when they transition okay so taylor says it depends on like when they transitioned if they've transitioned from a young age and they haven't gone through, we're talking male to female, mm -hmm. if they haven't gone through male puberty, that does not give them a biological advantage. Okay, so just if they've not gone through male puberty, it does not give them a biological advantage. This is very scientific. We're all going to learn I'm something. Sure anyway. She's pretty sure. Don't take anything we're saying 100%. But that's interesting, isn't it? So if they've transitioned at a young age... And they've not gone through male puberty. It means they've not got a biological because they advantage. Gone on blockers and all of that. Mm -hmm. Because they would have gone on blockers and all of that jazz, says um, Taylor. Whereas if they transgendered, transgendered, <laughs> if they transitioned at a later age, right, and they had gone through male puberty, that gives them a ginormous advantage. Okay, so she says if you transitioned after puberty, it would naturally give you a ginormous advantage. Bigger lungs. Bones, bigger lungs stronger, stronger bones no more muscle mass more muscle mass just there's loads of different parts factors to it i don't think there is a right or a wrong answer no i agree i think it's i'm all for transgender people taking part in sports mm -hmm. in i think maybe sense. it's like subjective to the sport yeah. potentially like depending on what the biological advantage is are and how they would affect that specific sport but mm -hmm. I'm certainly not for people like say this Algerian boxer was transgender I'm really not for the people like completely coming for her and the Olympics being like absolutely well, disgusting there was a male to female mm -hmm. when they swimmer when they swam as a male they were like 400 mm -hmm. so there's a male to female swimmer a, so a transgender woman when they swam in the male section, they were 400. And when they transitioned and started swimming in the women's section, they were first. And when they transitioned and started swimming in the women's section, they were first. That's mm. very interesting. So it's yeah. like the biological advantage, like, you know, the larger, yeah. mm -hmm. like the, what do you say, better lungs? 
a bit bigger lung capacity. Not necessarily in the lung, but there's it's like yeah, yeah, really interesting. But yeah, it's I very scientific. It is. It's very. It is. And that's thing. It's scientific, but I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think, um, obviously, I I do think it might be subjective to the sport and what the sport entails obviously something like boxing if it's you know it means you've got much stronger muscles but you can have really strong women and like people have said even if Amani was transgendered there are plenty of women who have beaten her um mm -hmm. like people from Ireland I don't know why that's relevant but I'm sure someone said like this person from Ireland has beat this woman so it's not like she was had beaten everyone um so yeah it's it's a tricky situation i don't want to you know say the wrong thing and upset somebody but i think yeah I, I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer but i'm very much pro i don't want does that make sense i'm pro trans transgender i don't think that makes sense <laughs> but i'm very much an ally for my transgender friends <clears throat> we have some very close transgender friends to us um and i do think some of the things that were being said were absolutely discussing and i think there is no place for that not even not only just in sport but for life in general no matter like i don't think you can say oh the olympics should like people are saying like the olympics should be does this should be banned or they said something like about the olympics as like a committee and a thing and i just think it's absolutely disgusting i just let the girl box do you know what i mean so that's that's what i'm gonna say on this matter and if you yeah just let's just support our trans friends and make them feel seen and welcome and and loved oh no my google form's gone off let's go to the next one next up we have tips for my first date with a woman have fun i think it's so much more fun dating a woman um i'm probably not the best person to give advice to because i've only dated one woman whereas my girlfriend has dated many to my what's the word dismay disarray what's the word dismay I don't know. Disgust. To, to my disgust to my despair <laughs> um you know when like you just like look at them and think you like you've kissed other women it makes me sick to my stomach oh my god i will come back to your dilemma everyone taylor told me she didn't love me today i didn't know <laughs> so basically she didn't actually we are still very much in love um even though like all of my friends keep falling out of love um, like this is not even targeted at one friend it's targeted at many I keep getting messages from my friends being like my relationships are shambles and I'm like <laughs> keeps looking at me being like don't you do that too because genuinely like about four of my friends have had this dilemma recently um yeah thankfully Taz <laughs> is not that deep um so on our dance school raffle Taylor won a voucher for my favorite clothing company it's a small independent business um and it is on the pricier side. And Taylor won a £50 voucher for them. She also won a voucher for a cut and blow dry. So I thought being the kind, caring, loving, supportive girlfriend that she is, I thought that she would donate me this voucher. Is she going to do that? No, she's not. How, how rude. Like, that is basically her saying, I don't love you. I'm going to get a nice new jumper. And she's actually said she's not going to let me wear the jumper that she wears. I know she will. She won't get a choice. Sometimes I just wear your clothes, don't I? Like, and she'll be like, I've slept in that top like three days in a row. And I'm like, I know, but it smells like you. So I'm going to wear it. Um, there's just something fun about wearing other people's clothes sometimes, isn't there? But yeah, basically she told me that she doesn't love me. She's not going to share this voucher with me. And quite frankly, I am offended. But yeah, back to your question. Tips for my first date with a woman. I think just be yourself. Um, one thing that I think is so brilliant about dating women is that they understand a woman's needs. You know, I feel like men sometimes you have to like sort of almost like tell them, be like, you know, I want flowers and I want this and this is what I like. Whereas I feel like women, they just get it a lot more. I feel like naturally... They're more like flirtatious, they're more loving, they're more caring. Um, so I think just go in and have fun. Um, there's no pressure to end up with that woman for the rest of your life, even though that's what happened with me and Taylor. Um, 
yeah, just go, be yourself, have fun. Obviously, it's your first date with women, so they might not be exactly your type. You might end up going and realising that you're not even gay at all and it was just something that you wanted to try. Um, and that's fine too. But yeah, I think you've just got to go and be yourself. My girlfriend who's dated many a woman, do you have any advice to add? You have dated about 1,700 women I in your time. Not. I have not. She's dated lots of women. Not that many, if you think about it. About five. That's not many. It's more in than the, me. In the grand scheme of things, that is not many. Well, it still upsets me Sorry to think like... Sorry freaking Virgin Mary. Like, how dare you date and kiss other women when you knew I was going to come into your life? I didn't know that, though. You should have. You should have foreseen it. Well, I didn't foresee anything. <laughs> Do you have any advice? Um, I think just be you. Be Go you. Go in there with an open mind. Go in there with... I think that's great advice. Go in with an open mind. Don't expect anything. Yeah. Don't put any pressure on it. Every Don't... date is going to be different. Yeah. Every date is going to be different. So, yeah, just go in. I think that's... We'll take something away from that. Go in with an open mind. Don't expect anything. Don't put any like pressure on it. Like think it has to go a certain way or think, you know, think don't think, oh, I'm gonna hate this or I'm gonna love it. Just go in, see what happens. Um, you never know, you might even just make a good friendship out of it. Who knows? Go in, have fun. Please let us know how it goes. I'll be really intrigued to see that. Okay, we're gonna finish up on this lovely one. This is so cute, I actually might cry. It says, Hey, congrats on one thousand. Just want to say I'm loving the podcast and so proud to say I've been a supporter since episode one. I can't wait until you hit one million and I can say I've been here since the beginning. That's so cute. Isn't that so cute? I actually might cry. Honestly, it like I've said, it means so much to have your guys' like support on the podcast because, yeah, I would speak to myself, but it's so nice knowing that you guys are there listening and enjoying. Um, and it's just, it's been so nice to really like step into my queerness and do this podcast um even though I'm convinced I'm famous aren't I Taylor I'm like walking down the streets so I'm like do you reckon anyone here's listening to the podcast <laughs> so if you listen and you see me please come and tell me because that will boost my ego massively um yeah it's honestly just so nice to have your guys' support um and I'm just loving it. I am going to treat myself, unless Taylor did tell me she's bought me a present, because she did say she bought me a present for 1000 So if Taylor's not bought me a new microphone... She hasn't. She, oh, she hasn't. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. There's our answer. I'm going to treat myself, when I have a bit more money, <laughs> to, like, a new recording setup, so I can have even better sound quality for you guys. Um, and your present to me for hitting 1000 downloads, if you haven't already download the podcast don't know if you can subscribe to a podcast but you know hit the download button subscribe turn on the notification so you know when there's a new episode coming um send in your dilemmas your questions your stories if you don't have any of them things just pop an answer into the question of the week because all that stuff helps me create even more content and then you know the episodes are a bit more exciting so we can speak about more and then more people can enjoy them and listen and share 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 tell your friends tell your gay friends be like come listen even if they're not gay they everyone is welcome here this is a safe space for everyone to come and enjoy and be themselves and feel seen and feel heard and yeah i just want to thank you all because it's it's so lovely to have over 1000 people's support and like i said obviously that's just the people who download it people could be listening without downloading it which just blows my mind um and yeah just so much love to you all i'm gonna wrap us up here get this episode edited and uploaded and i'll speak to you all next week for episode 10 love you all bye